okay uh, good evening all mm, i welcome you all for this uh, today's session now in today's session we are going to discuss uh, four types of the alloy steels uh, in this uh, silicon steel we are going to discuss um, after this silicon steel maraging steel then free cutting steel free cutting steel then maraging steel and die steel okay four types we are going to cover uh, in today's session along with their composition properties and applications one by one uh, we will discuss this part uh, for your better understanding to understand the applications uh, i have added lots of pictures in presentation okay uh, it took a lot of time for me to make these ppts so uh, please uh, try to use it properly it will help you for a better understanding and it will help you for easily remembering the applications of specific uh, alloy steels okay now we will start with this uh, silicon steel okay silicon steel uh, it is also termed as electrical steel okay why it is termed as electrical steel because uh, depending on its application only it is termed as electrical steel because whichever whichever components are manufactured with the help of these steels the, that we are using or uh, its application these like silicon steel found its application in the electrical field lot of components uh, like your pa electric power transformers and different kinds of the electric motors generators and lots of other components are there that are useful in the electrical field that's why these steels are termed as silicon steels then first we will uh, discuss related to its composition these steels are low carbon steels okay low carbon steels with carbon percentage less than 0.05% and silicon up to 5% okay low carbon steel you have to mention this low carbon steel with carbon percent less than 0.05% and silicon up to 5% okay and if you are not writing this low carbon steel then you have to mention composition like this carbon less than 0.05% silicon uh, up to 5% and balance iron or remaining iron okay as you are mentioning low carbon steel automatically it is alloy of iron and carbon okay hence uh, remaining amount will be of iron only or if you are writing directly carbon is 0.05 silicon up to 5% then you have to separately mention balance is iron or remaining amount uh, will be iron like this you have to write the composition as it is a low carbon steel depending on it you can decide its uh, some properties Uh, low carbon steel with 0.05 0.05% carbon automatically uh, you can say that it is a very soft malleable ductile in nature okay the silicon steels are very soft malleable ductile in nature and they are having magnetic properties and then uh, due to addition of this silicon up to 5% silicon we are adding in the low carbon steel And what is the effect of this silicon addition in this uh, steel <clears throat> okay in low carbon steel we have added silicon now due to the addition of this silicon some properties will get improved okay as it is a low carbon steel it is soft malleable ductile and you can perform machining operations or welding operations or forming operations very easily on this uh, material or this silicon steel But due to addition of this silicon some properties gets improved and that this material particularly silicon steel it have you can say that they have very good resistivity okay here this resistivity is nothing but it provides the resistance for the flow of electric current okay it is termed as it has good resistivity and then less hysteresis loss and high permeability okay now these two are uh, maybe you are aware of it uh, i will explain it less hysteresis loss then here the basic thing is what is the meaning of hysteresis loss okay 
Now, whenever there is a, a material due to continuous magnetization and demagnetization, okay, by applying the electric current and by removing electric current, okay, continuously you are applying and removing. In this process, continuously that material or steel will get magnetized and demagnetized. During this process, continuous magnetization and demagnetization process, some amount of heat loss will occur. Okay, some amount of heat uh, means energy loss will take place in the form of heat. This will be termed as hysteresis loss. Okay, now what happens here exactly? Uh, whichever input you are providing here, uh, it will give you the output but with some delay or by taking some time gap okay there will be some lag between input and output of the system and this lag will be termed as a hysteresis okay in short what is the hysteresis loss uh, during the continuous magnetization and demagnetization process some amount of energy is lost in the form of heat it is termed as hysteresis okay hysteresis or hysteresis loss so this is the one new term i have explained it uh, then the next is the it, these materials have very good permeability permeability means they will allow the flow of a liquid or a gaseous medium okay that will be termed as the permeability okay now depending on these properties as it is having uh, these silicon steels have very good resistivity and a very less hysteresis loss. They are generally used in the uh, electrical field. Lots of components are manufactured, which are very helpful in the electrical field. And uh, these steels are used in electric power transformers, motors, and generators. And then these steels are specifically used in small uh, relays and pulse transformers. Then, now, one silicon steel, specific steel is there, one specific silicon steel with 1.25 to 2.5 percent silicon. It is also known as, or termed as a relay steel, and these are used for manufacturing of relays, armatures, and solenoids. Okay, all these components are used in the electrical field or various electric applications. I will show you the pictures. These are electric transformers. Okay, already you have seen this. These are used for transmission. Okay, transmission of your electricity. Then these are electric motors. Motor, electric motor is shown here. Then generator is there. Okay, this is the generator. Okay, this is electric transformer used for transmission then generator and electric motor. And uh, these, are, these are types uh, shown here. These are relays. Okay, this uh, relay, what is the function of relay? Uh, it will open or it will close the circuit. Okay, open or close the circuit. It will allow the switching on and switching off for a particular application. Okay, so these are electric transformers, generators, motors, uh, relays. Okay, These, then this is the armature, this picture here, this is armature and this is solenoid. Okay, so these are various applications and uh, of this silicon steel, specifically uh, these uh, relay, okay, these are relays, then armatures and solenoids. And these are made up of uh, low carbon steels with silicon uh, percentage 1.5 to 2.5%. Okay, here I have, sorry, 1.25% to 2.5%. Okay, please correct it. Silicon steel with 1.25 to 2.5% silicon. These are termed as relay steel and it is uh, used for manufacturing of this relays, armatures and solenoids. Generally, we are using these relays to open relays or the solenoids to open or close a particular circuit so that we can uh, switch it off or on okay 
so these are some applications of silicon steels and all applications are related to uh, only electrical field that's why these steels are termed as electrical steels okay so we will move towards the these are some we have discussed its composition properties and applications now we will move towards the next type this is free cutting steel free cutting steel or free machining steel okay free cutting steel or free machining steel so first we will discuss the composition okay so and these free cutting steels or free machining steels these are low carbon steels with carbon percentage maximum up to 0.25 percent then it consists of silicon phosphorus and manganese but quantity of uh, sorry not silicon sulfur phosphorus and manganese uh, then the maximum quantity of sulfur is 0.6 percent and a maximum quantity of phosphorus is up to 0.12 percent okay and whichever manganese we are adding we are adding that manganese by considering the amount of your sulfur okay depending on the quantity of sulfur we are deciding the amount of manganese generally 5 to 8 times the amount of sulfur uh, we are taking as a, the manganese quantity okay manganese will be 5 to 8 times the amount of sulfur very small amount of sulfur and phosphorus will be there okay we cannot add more amount of sulfur or phosphorus okay why we are not adding it because it will be considered as impurities if more amount of sulfur or phosphorus is there it will increase the impurities in uh, whichever steel you are using in these steels okay these are low carbon steels i have highlighted here composition the pre-cutting steel you can use low carbon steel as well as you can use the high carbon steel by adding other alloying elements if it is a low carbon steel uh, with less than 0.25 percent carbon then maximum 0.6 percent sulfur and maximum 0.12 percent uh, phosphorus is added and manganese is taken five to eight times the sulfur amount and if you have considered the high carbon steel then we are adding lead up to 0.35 percent okay now why we are adding uh, in high carbon steel why we are adding lead or in low carbon steels why we are adding manganese okay there are certain reasons now if suppose we are using this low carbon steels then the <clears throat> form as that low carbon steel is very soft in nature uh, the whichever the chips are formed uh, that are forming in a continuous way or continuous manner continuous chips are formed and it is very difficult to break that chip okay it does not get break easily and it will get uh, remain attached to your workpiece then during machining operation it will damage the uh, your tool and then your workpiece also now uh, to remove that chips as soon as it is formed to remove it from your workpiece we are adding sulfur okay sulfur or phosphorus and manganese is added okay now here what happens sulfur forms manganese sulfide okay sulfur forms sul uh, <coughs> sorry uh, sulfur reacts with manganese okay sulfur and manganese we have added and large amount of manganese we have considered then manganese will combine with sulfur and mns that is manganese sulfide is formed and this manganese sulfide will help to break the chips okay chip breaking activity will occur or it will be increased due to formation of a manganese sulfide by uh, due to the reaction of sulfur and manganese that's why uh, we are adding sulfur and manganese amount okay so in this way what will happen uh, now the break chips will get break as soon as they are forming hence it will protect the uh, workpiece also you will get a smooth surface finish and uh, it does not damage the cutting tool you are using whichever cutting tool you are using it does not 
provide any damage to that okay so this is related to the reasoning behind why we are adding manganese in low carbon steel along with some sulfur quantity then the next question arises here why we are adding lead into this high carbon steels okay then addition of this lead as we all know that high carbon steel it has very low machinability now what will happen due to addition of this lead okay due to addition of this lead it uh, lead will uh, get included uh, and its uh, globular shaped lead particles will get added in that steel and due to that uh, it will influence the machining material will get easily removed from that high carbon steel due to addition of the lead it is uh, insoluble and it will remain as it is it will get added and it is having globular or spherical shape so that it uh, chip formation or a removal becomes easy okay it uh, accelerates the material removal rate so that you, we can also use high carbon steels by addition of lead but generally low carbon steels are used with carbon percentage less than 0.25% and sulfur 0.6% phosphorus 0.12% and manganese 5 to 8 times the amount of sulfur so this is related to the composition of free cutting steel or free machining steel now uh, related to the properties uh, now already we have discussed the composition and uh, we we are using the low carbon steels here now as it is a low carbon steel with very less 0.25% carbon then it possesses all the properties of low carbon steels that is nothing but these steels are very soft malleable and ductile in nature okay and additionally they are magnetic in nature also and then the properties related to the processing the as these are soft malleable and ductile they are having very good formability weldability and machinability along with very good toughness characteristics okay so these are properties almost uh, properties are very similar to your low carbon steel okay low carbon steel then now as we have understood the pro composition and its properties easily you can you will be able to remember the uh, its applications now these free cutting steels or free machining steels they are generally used for manufacturing of different kinds of nuts bolts screws different kinds of automobile parts and instruments okay here i have highlighted that's why it is termed as free cutting steel or pre machining steel easily we can perform the machining operation on the steel and you can form the different machine components with a very high speed or very high manufacturing rate or by using very high material removal rate okay different types of nuts i have highlighted here different types of nuts bolts then different types of screws different types of screws are here okay uh, these <clears throat> all are made from the <clears throat> pre cutting steel or free machining steels okay we easily we can perform machining operation or cutting operation and we can give the any desired shape to this uh, steel hence they are termed as free machining steels or free cutting steels and these are some common applications different kinds of nuts bolts screws okay and other some apply uh, some small small components are highlighted here that are useful in the automobile field these all are manufactured with the help of this free cutting steel or free machining steels okay so this is free cutting steel or free machining steel and next type i will move towards next type this is very important type this is marriaging steels okay this name is given um, because of its characteristics okay characteristics and uh, it has very high hardness okay or high strength and hardness it will have these material marriaging steels have very high hardness now and this hardness is obtained by performing 
हार्डनिंग बाय एजिंग मेथड हार्डनिंग बाय एजिंग मेथड दैट्स वाय दिस एजिंग इन फ्रॉम दिस माय एजिंग दिस एजिंग वर्ड इज टेकन हार्डनिंग बाय एजिंग एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस हार्डनिंग मार्टेनसाइट इज फॉर्म्ड ओके मार्टेनसाइट दैट्स वाय दिस एम ए आर फ्रॉम दिस मार्टेनसाइट इज टेकन मार्टेनसिटिक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हार्डनिंग इज डन बाय मार्टेनसिटिक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ओके Hardening is done or obtained by martensitic transformation, followed by aging. Okay, hence it is termed as this first three letters of this martensite M A R, and this is aging. Hence, these steels are termed as mar aging steels. Okay, so what is the martensite? What is the aging? All these terms we are going to discuss in the fourth chapter. Just try to understand here. By in the final microstructure, okay, it has the martensite. Okay, at room temperature, martensite structure or phase will be obtained by performing one hardening, okay, followed by uh, aging treatment. Okay, that's why this is termed as mar aging steels. Okay, so hence it is termed as mar aging steel. this may be asked in mcqs or some reasoning type questions and then after this we will discuss the uh, composition of this mar aging steel <coughs> the, okay please uh, note down this composition
<coughs> okay. <coughs> so this is the third type for today's session. This is marriaging steels. Okay. So <coughs> these are marriaging steels. Why these steels are termed as marriaging steels? Because here these steels are having very high strength and hardness. Okay. Okay, if uh, writing is completed, then I will start the explaining. I will start this explanation. Marriaging steels. Okay, here question arises why these steels termed as marriaging steels? So, name is given as marriaging steels because these steels have very high strength and hardness. And this strength and hardness is obtained uh, by or due to presence of martensite phase. And this martensite phase, okay, this martensite phase is obtained by doing the hardening process. Okay, here we are doing the hardening by martensitic transformation followed by some aging. Okay, followed by some aging. Hence, this name is given from the martensite phase, MAR, first three letters are taken. And from this aging treatment, all letters are taken. And this marriaging word is given. Okay. Its specific characteristics of high strength and hardness is obtained uh, in this steel by martensitic transformation using hardening followed by aging treatment. Hence, this is termed as marriaging steel. Now, related to its composition, these steels are low carbon steels with <clears throat> carbon percentage less than 0.03%. Then other alloying elements are present here in significant amount, like nickel, 18 to 25 percent nickel, 3 to 5 percent molybdenum, then 3 to 8 percent cobalt, okay, 3 to 5 percent molybdenum, 3 to 8 percent cobalt, and 0.2 to 1.6 percent titanium, with very small amount of aluminium is there. Okay, low carbon steel. But alloying element quantity is very significant. Nickel 18 to 25 percent, molybdenum 3 to 5 percent, cobalt is 3 to 8 percent, and titanium is also present. Okay. Then these steels have ultra high strength at room temperature. Okay. Already I have explained why it is having ultra high strength due to presence of. At a room temperature, martensite phase is present. It gives very high hardness. Okay, means carbon is present in the form of martensite. Okay, it is nothing but uh, different um, products are there. Transformation products, austenite at higher temperature ranges, austenite is there. That is gamma phase. At a room temperatures, it may get transformed to perlite. Perlite is mixture of ferrite and cementite. Okay, now this perlite may be present in three forms. It may be as a perlite, or it may be as a bionite, or it may be as a martensite. Okay, I have added one separate lecture uh, on my. Okay, you can check that lecture on our YouTube links. Okay, Mara uh, transformation products of austenite. Okay, two hours or one and a half hour session already. I have added it. You can go through that uh, from our YouTube uh, links and uh, you can go through that session uh, <clears throat> or uh, already I have recorded it. But, uh, if you want, I will uh, take that session separately also. But now what you have to understand here, Martin side will give you the highest possible hardness in this steel. Okay, and that Martin side is present in this marriaging steels, hence it gives you ultra high strength at the room temperature. Then superior fracture toughness okay, compared to pinched and tempered steel. This is nothing but a heat treatment process. 
just you have to what you have to understand here ultra high strength very good toughness and we can do the fabrication operations very easily as it is a low carbon steel also here hardness is present due to other alloying elements and carbon is present in the form of martensite that's why hardness is more strength and hardness is more now depending on its characteristics it is having very uh, means important applications you can say that i will have added lots of pictures for better understanding of this these steels are used for manufacturing of rocket casing air frame and different engine components okay then these steels are used for manufacturing of different low temperature structural parts then different kinds of pressure vessels then injection molds and dies then undercarriage legs for aircraft missile cases cannon recoil spring fan shafts in the jet engines for all these i have added the pictures in next slide you can refer to that because the lots of names you are not aware of it okay that's why i have added some pictures okay here you can refer it these are the pictures okay here towards the left corner of your slide you can see here air frame okay different aircrafts are there for this that aircraft this is the air frame okay this is the frame whichever aircraft you are manufacturing this is the frame of that aircraft and this air frame is manufactured with the help of maraging steel okay because the maraging steels are having good machinability with very high strength and hardness due to presence of martensite carbon is present in the form of martensite at room temperature okay this frame is manufactured with help of maraging steel then whichever injection mold dies are there this is injection mold die okay this injection mold die is manufactured with the help of this maraging steel okay it again requires strength and hardness okay and then next applications next slide cannon recoil spring okay whichever gun you have seen in the movies uh, they are loading gun and firing the gun okay and this loading and uh, firing process this cannon recoil spring will play the important role here separately i have shown it okay here where the cannon recoil spring is there okay you can see here cannon recoil spring in the gun in lots of movies uh, already you have seen it okay, they are loading the gun and they are firing it okay and for this operation uh okay they are loading the gun and firing the gun and that gun is returned to the original position and it is ready for uh, next uh, next shot or again you are loading and again you are firing and, uh, during all this process this cannon recoil spring is working and this is made up of uh, uh, maraging steel okay then different kinds of uh, rockets and missile these are uh, rocket casing and this missile casing casing means that outer body okay which your rockets are there missiles are there okay here i have added some pictures these are prithvi ballistic missiles and dhanush ballistic missile okay this is prithvi ballistic missile these two in the right corner i have added the dhanush ballistic missile okay these are different missiles which we have tested Okay, uh, manufactured uh, <clears throat> in our country only, and they have tested successfully. And whichever casing is there, this is casing. Okay, this is the casing. These uh, rocket casing and uh, missile casings are manufactured with the help of this maraging steels only. Okay, cannon recoil spring, and the rocket and missile casing. Okay, air frame we have seen. then injection mold die okay then these are okay fan shafts in jet engines okay this is the fan and this fan is mounted on a shaft okay fan here we are using okay this is the 
shaft. Okay, and this is manufactured by using this margined steel. Okay, then here you can see the undercarriage legs for missiles or rockets. These are undercarriage legs. These legs you are seeing. That these are supporting for proper placement of the uh, that rocket or missile before its launching. Okay, these undercarriage legs are manufactured with the help of margined steel only. And then next, okay, uh, okay. And these are uh, lots of pictures I have added. So in this way, this margined steel is used for manufacturing of airframe, injection mold, dies, and then cannon recoil spring used in the gun, which helps for loading the gun and firing the gun. And again, uh, repeating the same operation, then a rocket missile casing, fan shafts in the jet engines and undercarriage legs for missiles or rockets. Some part I have collected with pictures so that you will easily remember the specific applications. Okay. So this is the margined steel. Then the next type is the die steel. Okay. This is die steel. From name itself, uh, you will be understand it or it is very easy to remember its application. It is used, these die steels are used for manufacturing of different kinds of dies, which are used for metal working. Okay. It may be a forging die, extrusion die, rolling die, or a deep drawing dies. For, uh, for performing rolling operations, some rolling rolls are required. All these are manufactured with the help of these die steels only. Okay, for easily understanding and uh, remembering the uh, applications. Okay, <clears throat> and all kinds of tools are manufactured with the help of this die steel. First, uh, we will discuss the applications later also. First, uh, only for better understanding, I am telling you this. Now, these die steels, these die steels, uh, <clears throat> from its application, already your uh, means come to the conclusion that is a high carbon steel. Okay, it is a, these steels are generally high carbon steels with other alloying elements. That's why you can say that these are steels, high carbon steels or alloy steels with carbon percentage 0.8 to 1.5% with addition of some other alloying elements. Okay, then here, some few points I have added. Okay, to increase the level of hardness of the tool steels, various elements with alloying properties. Okay, some other elements to increase the hardness of that tool steel and to increase the hardness, wear resistance, abrasion resistance, and fitting ability of that tool steel. We are adding other alloying elements like chromium, vanadium molybdenum, manganese, tungsten in the plain carbon steel. Okay, In high carbon steel, we are adding the alloying elements like chromium, vanadium, molybdenum, tungsten to increase its hardness, wear resistance and cutting ability of that particular steel. This is related to the composition part. Then there are different types of this uh, dye steel present. Okay, Depending on the way it is manufactured, Depending on the way it is manufactured, there are different types of the die steels. And you can say this is not, um, they are not going to ask this part, just I have added for your information. Okay, just try to remember the composition. Uh, these are high carbon steels or alloy steels with carbon percentage 0.8 to 1.5 percent, with addition of some other alloying elements like. Chromium, vanadium, molybdenum, tungsten, manganese, etc. Due to addition of these other alloying elements, uh, they will it will get improved hardness and cutting ability along with some better wear resistance and abrasion resistance. Now, depending on the uh, way or type how they are manufactured, these die steels are manufactured. They are classified in uh, <clears throat> different types. 
okay now the first type is hot work steels then cold work steels they are classified in i think five different types hot work steels then cold work steels then shock resistant steels okay and low carbon steels high speed die steels <coughs> and plastic mold tool steels okay and uh, they are some i have indicated some names means this is just the designation part hot work steel or cold work steels this and their designation hot work steels are denoted by this h11 h13 tb6 p12 like this cold work steels are denoted by d2 d3 o1 like this then shock resistant low carbon tool steels high speed die steels these are denoted by m2 m35 t1 like this and plastic mold tool steels okay so this is just for your information depending on the method used for manufacturing that die steel it is having different type these five six types are there then related to its properties already we have discussed that uh, its composition in the composition uh, as a high carbon steel it is a high carbon steel hence uh, you can say that it is having very high strength and hardness and other alloying elements like chromium or chromium tungsten vanadium is present then these other alloying elements like chromium vanadium molybdenum tungsten they will form their respective carbides by combining with the carbon and due to presence of this carbide particles what will happen their wear resistance will get increased wear resistance abrasion resistance it will be improved okay wear resistance abrasion resistance shock resistance it will get improved okay so these are uh, the properties of this die steel these are having very high strength and high hardness along with very good wear resistance abrasion resistance and shock resistance okay and then we will move towards the application part after discussing we have completed the discussion of composition properties now we will move towards the application as a name itself it will indicate uh, that die steel hence these are used these steels are used for manufacturing of different dies which we are using for metal working operations like forging dies extrusion dies deep drawing dies then different uh, uh, rolling rolls we can manufacture with the help of this die steel material only okay then these die steels are used for manufacturing of tools okay which we can use for different cutting operations okay, for different operations like cutting stamping shearing punching okay for for simple machining for performing all these operations we require tools and all these tools are manufactured with the help of these die steels only okay die steels only why die steels is only you, you can use for the manufacturing of this tools because due to the presence of other alloying elements they form the carbides and they due to the carbide presence of this carbide its wear resistance will improve but along with that the cutting ability will get improved due to presence of these carbides suppose chromium carbide or vanadium carbide is there or tungsten carbide is there then it will improve the cutting ability along with wear resistance and abrasion resistance cutting ability will get improved hence for different operations like cutting stamping punching shearing or simply machining operation also we can use the different tools and all these tools you can manufacture with the help of die steels i have collected some pictures so that you can understand so different types of tools manufactured from the is die steel okay different types of tools are here 
okay different types of tools are here some cutters are there you can see different kinds of cutters are there okay different types of the tools uh, some tools which we can use for different operations or for, for, for different types of <clears throat> for removing the metal you can use different types of drills or some uh, reamers are there some brochures are there or different cutting tools okay all these are here these are different tools manufactured with the help of these die steels okay please uh, see the picture so these are these are the pictures die steels applications of the die steels or tools which can be manufactured from the die steel okay now uh, please check this uh, if you are having any query uh, i will wait for one or few minutes if any query is there please mention that query in the chat box Okay, please any queue if you have any query, please mention that query in the chat box. Or if you are not having any query, please uh, enter your roll numbers and collect the attendance.
any queries there okay no doubt okay if no doubt is there wait no i'm not visible on the screen okay okay now uh, uh, i will repeat some uh, applications so in this uh, die <clears throat> dye steel we have discussed that all types of dyes which we are using for performing different operations like uh, okay for forging extrusion deep drawing all dyes are manufactured with the help of this dye steel rolling rolls are also manufactured then different types of grills and then different types of the rimmers are here different types of uh, file fly you can say that files are here okay which we are using in the workshop okay then different types of the cutters are here that we are using It means in short you can say that different types of tools which we are using uh, are manufactured with the help of die steels okay drills rimmers some taps are also there then also files are also there that can be manufactured with the help of this die steel only okay now i will summarize this session in this uh, today's session we have completed four types of the alloy steels okay more in previous session i have completed four and in this session i have completed four types now we have started today with silicon steel this is silicon steel is also known as electrical steel okay and it is a low carbon steel with less than 0.05% carbon and silicon up to 5% and due to its characteristics like soft malleable and ductile nature and very good resistivity and less hysteresis loss it is used for manufacturing of different types of electric transformers generators electric motors and there is one special type of silicon steel it's termed as a relay steel with low carbon steel uh, and silicon percentage 1.25 to 2.5% that is relay steel and it is used for manufacturing of these relays armatures and solenoids okay then the next type is free cutting steel or free machining steel it is here you can use low carbon steel as well as high carbon steel if you are using low carbon steel then its uh, carbon percentage is less than 0.25% with maximum amount of sulfur up to 0.6% and maximum amount of phosphorus permitted is 0.12% with 5 to 8 times the quantity of manganese that of sulfur 5 to 8 times quantity of sulfur is taken uh, as manganese quantity or you can use the high carbon steel with lead 0.35% okay these lead are added to improve machinability and here we are added Uh, manganese in the low carbon steel to facilitate the facilitate chip breaking or easy removal of the chips which are forming <coughs> sorry and then these steels are soft malleable ductile very good for malleability weldability and machinability all the characteristics of low carbon steels and due to this characteristic these are used for manufacturing of different kinds of nuts bolts the nuts bolts then different kinds of screws and other automobile uh, instruments which we can use okay, these are highlighted in these pictures then maraging steel so it uh, why the name here in this maraging steel at a room temperature martensite is present okay and this martensite is obtained by 
you can say that hardening by aging method hence this is termed as a maraging steel its composition will be low carbon steel steel and carbon will be 0.03 percent up to maximum 0.03 percent and 18 to 25 percent nickel molybdenum 3 to 5 and 3 to 8 percent cobalt and some small amount of titanium up to 1.6 percent with a very small amount of aluminium as martensite phase is there it shows ultra high strength and hardness and very good toughness fracture toughness and easily it, you can perform fabrication operation on it these are used for manufacturing of the air frame different injection molds <clears throat> okay injection molds or injection dies can be manufactured and canon recoil spring present in the gun which helps for loading and unloading of that gun these are manufactured with the help of maraging steel then a rocket and missile casing fan of the shaft present in the jet engine undercarriage legs for the missiles these are undercarriage legs for supporting of missile or rocket before the launching these are manufactured with the help of maraging steel then the die steels these are generally high carbon steel with alloying elements high carbon steel with carbon percentage 0.8 to 1.5 percent with addition of other alloying elements like chromium molybdenum vanadium tungsten and due to presence of their respective carbides these are a, having very high strength and hardness along with very good wear resistance shock resistance abrasion resistance and high cutting ability and due to their high cutting ability lots of tools which are used for cutting stamping shearing punching operations like different kinds of uh, files are there okay different kinds of files in different kinds of taps drills uh, reamers and different types of cutters are there all these are you manufactured with the help of the die steels and also whichever dies are required for performing forging extrusion forging extrusion or deep drawing operation of the metals or rolling operation of the metals that dies all dies are manufactured with the help of this die steels okay so in this way in today's session we have completed these four types okay silicon steel and then pre cutting steel or free machining steel maraging steels and die steels in the next session uh, we are going to discuss related to the tool steels in that tool steel different cold work the tool steels hot work the tool steel high speed tool steels are there uh, then some specific uh, types of the alloy steels in that stainless steel is there that we will discuss in the next sessions okay now uh, i will stop this session here only uh, okay if you receive uh, you can join we, or you can continue with the next session if link is sent by this sir you can continue with your next session okay okay for each day i will send uh, whichever timetable is updated i will send the message on our whatsapp group okay thank you uh, you can leave the session now thank you thank you very much